Hey, super scientists, we're in your microbiology lab notebook looking at micro seven outbreaks, epidemics, and pandemics. So we're primarily going to look at the differences between epidemics and pandemics. So first off, Walking Dead fans, zombie virus, epidemic or pandemic? I don't know. Appears to be worldwide. Seems like it's a pandemic. So we're going to look at your images here and record in your lab notebook what your thoughts are. So take just a few moments, pause the video, look at this picture and this picture, and record your reaction to these pictures. So these images are of a plague doctor. You can see this nice little beak. It kind of looks like a bird beak mask. So, And you can literally see the word doctor right here. So this was during the 1300s. You had this mask that a lot of doctors wore for um, protection, literally head-to-toe protection, uh, this waxy kind of coat here. And why do you think it had this beak on the end? Why would the doctor literally have a mask that extended like that? So a lot of um, plague doctors, a lot of people back during the 1300s, thought that the plague was caused by miasmas, literally bad air. So um, they did not have access to microscopes. Um, knowledge about microorganisms was not readily available. So people thought that bad air is just kind of what caused people to have diseases or an imbalance in different things that was occurring. So they would pack in the bird beak part of the mask different things that smelled sweet, like spices and dried flowers. And they thought that this mask would protect them from different kinds of um, harm that might come to them as a result of the plague. So looking at this graph here, we can see that there are different variations in the amount of people that were affected by this type of outbreak. So what is an outbreak? An outbreak is going to be when you have a disease that um, suddenly occurs in an area. It's usually going to be a smaller area, and it's going to be in greater numbers than you would expect. So it's not necessarily usually going to be a few people. It's going to be a handful of people. So if you look at this graph, uh, these numbers here tell us the amount of people that had this particular infection. So there were about 60 people, a little bit over that, in Cleveland County that had this infection. And you can see there's some surrounding counties like Gaston County, uh, some in South Carolina that had smaller amounts of people that were impacted by this particular infection. So Gaston County had about maybe 15 people. So outbreak's gonna be a small area and it's gonna be a handful of people that are impacted in that particular area. So what is this infection that we're looking at on the graph here? This is in Cleveland County the Cleveland County Fair E. coli outbreak. So this particular um, infection was an outbreak that occurred in 2012, and E. coli, which causes nasty stuff um, to your digestive system, your uh, gastrointestinal issues, um, this outbreak occurred, and a lot of people who went to the Cleveland County Fair were impacted by this particular bacteria. You may have heard about that on the news even. So it's important that after you um, handle things that may be contaminated, which we don't know what may have viruses or bacteria on it because we can't see them, they're microscopic, um, that you make sure you wash your hands with hot water and soap. This is also another image that's in your lab notebook. This is a cholera outbreak in London, 1854, and the little red dots that we see are cholera victims. The blue circles are water pumps. So these water wells, these pumps, have the numbers here. It's just to kind of help you as a reference. So if you take a look at this image, can you tell where the outbreak started? Can you tell where this cholera outbreak occurred? It's going to be where you have the higher concentration of the red dots. So we have a lot of different um, sections where there's kind of pockets of red dots that are occurring. Then we have some outliers over here as well, a few over here. So think about which of these wells, which of these water pumps was the origin for cholera. And cholera, again, is going to be a uh, digestive issues. It's going to cause lots of diarrhea. Basically, you can get dehydrated and you can die from cholera. So this well, probably well six, is the one where the outbreak occurred. So since this is showing us water pumps, how do you think cholera is spread? Cholera is going to be spread by contaminated water, right? So what about these little dots that you see around here? Why do you have some of these outliers that are not near the original um, contaminated well? Think about some reasons why you might have these outliers.
Maybe this person traveled into town and then went back to their home. Maybe they um, were given a gift of some soup or something that used the contaminated water. So there's lots of different types of reasons why they might um, be sick, why they might be infected with cholera, and yet not one of the people that is immediately around the water pump. So what's an epidemic? We talked about an outbreak, how an outbreak is going to be small and it's going to be in a contained area, in a small area like a county. What about epidemics? So epidemics are going to be the um, kind of the medium um, infectious disease outbreaks. So when you have an epidemic, it's going to be an outbreak of infectious disease. It's going to affect a larger number of people that are in the same area. So it may still be a small area, but it's going to be a lot more people. Something you may have heard about in the news lately is Ebola. Ebola is a really nasty virus. It basically causes lots of internal bleeding, liquefies your organs. It's really bad. Um, SARS is something you hear about periodically. Um, several years ago, it was in the news a lot. And you can see that um, these ladies in this ballet class are wearing masks. So if they're wearing masks to cover their nose and mouth, how do you think SARS will be spread? Through the air, by breathing in um, some kind of contaminant. So SARS is severe acute respiratory syndrome. So that causes um, respiratory problems, gonna be um, breathing in that particular uh, pathogen. A lot of times when you have epidemics or pandemics even, people start to um, become quarantined. If you have something that's um, really easily spread, infectious disease, particularly in areas where you don't have health care that can um, help people to get uh, treatments and medication for those particular types of infectious diseases. So this is a um, historical photo just to show you an example of what a quarantine may be like. And it may be somebody um, is quarantined to their home, so they are at their home um, until they are no longer a threat in passing on that particular pathogen. And if it's a lot of people, like an epidemic, um, like an epidemic of typhoid, for example, then you may have people in the same area. So this is showing a lot of people who have whatever this particular illness is, and it's like in a gymnasium, for example, and you have uh, doctors and nurses, and you have people that are on these sick beds. So um, that was that happened a lot historically, having these quarantines, and happens in um, what we refer to as third world countries that don't have access to good health care like we do. And the last um, classification is a pandemic. So your STEM pan means all, and DIM refers to uh, people or populations. So um, a pandemic is going to be when you have an outbreak of infectious disease and it's going to spread across a large region. It could be a continent, it could be worldwide even, and it's usually going to spread fairly quickly as well. So when you have a pandemic, um, it can be affected by things like travel. So I have a picture of an airplane here because if you think about when you have a pandemic, how does it get worldwide? How does it travel? How does that virus or that pathogen become spread worldwide? How does that infectious disease um, spread from one location to another location? Well, it's going to be generally through people transmitting that disease, right? So we're looking at this um, graph, this um, graphic of H1N1 pandemic. So that was a swine flu, 2009. You may have heard about that. So the areas where you have yellow, those are cumulative cases, total cases of 1 to 10 people. And then the red areas are going to be 501 or more. So which areas look to be harder hit by the swine flu? North America, lots of people. A lot of areas in South America as well. A few pockets in Europe, um, some areas in Australia down here, and then we do have some places in Asia as well. So we have several areas worldwide that are kind of spread out where you have a lot of cases of H1N1, the swine flu. The dots that we see, the red dots, are showing us deaths, people that died as a result of this particular flu outbreak. So this flu pandemic, this influenza uh, H1N1, swine flu, um, caused a lot of people to get sick and a lot of people to die worldwide. We had a lot of people who died in the United States and in Mexico as well. So you can see that it was spreading pretty heavily in North America. So how does an airplane, how does transportation 
spread in a pandemic. If you think about it, if you get on an airplane, you're trapped in that airplane with a bunch of people for a prolonged period of time. Could be a few hours, could be 10 hours or more, just depending on where you're going, what your uh, destination is. So you're going to be breathing in that recycled air over and over and over, and people can be coughing and sneezing and spreading any kind of pathogen that they might have. And you don't know it. You don't know that they're sick, maybe. So that's a really easy way for transportation to spread a pandemic, to spread that infectious disease so that more people end up getting that particular disease. So what are some of the causes of pandemic? So one thing that can cause a, an infectious disease to turn into a pandemic is mutation. Viruses mutate really quickly. That's why viruses um, like the flu, for example, will have a vaccine for it. So um, doctors recommend that people get the flu shot, that people get the flu vaccine every year. Why is that? Because that particular um, that particular pathogen, viruses, lots of viruses mutate really quickly. They mutate from year to year. So that's why doctors recommend that people get flu shot because viruses mutate so easily, particularly if they are um, not the double-stranded DNA viruses, if they have just a single strand of RNA as their genetic material, for example. Um, viruses and other microbes are going to be um, or can be transmitted from one infected person to another. So pandemics um, are going to be generally from pathogens that can be easily spread from one person to another. And if you think about it, a lot of things um, like the flu can be breathed in. So if somebody sneezes, all that stuff goes everywhere. All that liquid and goo and whatever kind of pathogens are being sneezed out by that person. And then you don't know it's in the air unless you see them sneezing and maybe they didn't cover their mouth. And then you're breathing in all that stuff. People breathe. That's what we do. That's how we stay alive. It is an involuntary action that happens. So if you're breathing in that stuff constantly, then the chances are you're probably breathing in some kind of pathogen. So pandemic is going to be caused by infectious diseases that can be easily transmitted by humans, like just through breathing and can be spread from country to country. Again, transportation is going to be a big factor in spreading disease. And a lot of pandemics can um, have second outbreaks. So you'll have like the initial impact and then you'll have another outbreak that occurs later on within the same year usually. So I've got a historical picture here of the Black Death. This is the bubonic plague. It's caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis and it was transmitted through the biological vector of fleas, fleas that lived on rats. So these fleas would have the particular Yersinia pestis bacterium in their gut, in their bellies, in their digestive system. And they would bite the rats and, you know, feed off the blood on the rats and um, then go to another organism when the rat died. So trade, um, trade routes from boats carrying different goods in the 1300s. Um, helped to spread this bubonic plague, this Black Death. And it was called the Black Death because it caused these big pustules, these big black spots like all over the body. And it was basically necrotic, decaying, dead tissue. So it smelled really bad, which is another reason why the plague doctors in their little beak mask would have sweet smelling stuff like dried flowers. So if you kind of trace the colors and the time frames that you see here, you can see how this spread. So we've got a, the area down here, just to give you an example, um, in Italy. And if you trace the trade routes, you can see how it spread from one location to another location to another location and how it literally just spread around all of Europe in this example. So I hope you have had sort of the opportunity to classify and compare epidemics and pandemics.